to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone, to the regular session of the City Council for August 19, 2019. Under roll call, we need to excuse Roberto Monteveros as well as Justin Lee. So it is to be excused. It's been moved and seconded to excuse these two council members. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Next item is the agenda of the meeting. We need a motion in that effect. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the agenda and the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The first item of real business is the presentation on the EMS levy by Tony uh, Tony McKillop. Good evening. I'd like to start council, mayor, staff with my sincere apology. I, I have not been reporting on a regular basis and it was no disrespect intended. I've had a change of jobs and it's for the better and it's been very busy as it has with the ambulance. Uh, if there's any consolation, you're the first city I've reported to. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, number one, I'd like to start with the close of 2018. We had to replace our operations manager, which really started a process over again to recruit and try and find one. And in the last week, we have signed a contract, and I'm happy to announce that Bruce Brinding, uh, past chief of White Salmon, has accepted the chief of operations position for the EMS district. And, uh, Bruce brings a lot of integrity and experience to this position. He's filled in temporarily, which uh, didn't count against him. He stuck around and interviewed for a full time. Uh, he interviewed with three other people in uh, the Northwest and still was our best choice. So if you get a chance, uh, welcome him. Uh, number two, the primary question is the Additional uh, levy adjustment that, uh, you know, we sold for multiple reasons. One of them that's on everybody's tongue is the fourth ambulance. And we are striving to make that happen. It's not something that we turn on and off. It's something that has to be built in and that we have to work towards. So, for example, we are still in the process of... Uh, reconciling assets from the development of, of becoming our own district between the hospitals. Um, in addition to that, exploring part-time work for a fourth ambulance becomes as expensive as a full-time when I'm asking somebody to come up for a half a shift, uh, whether it's White Salmon or Goldendale is irrelevant, it's the, the half a shift if you're going to travel to do this job, it's just as expensive to do it for a half a shift twice uh, instead of one shift in travel. I think that you all recognize that. Um, in addition to that, I remind uh, the public that a lot of our staff only gets raises based on the minimum wage increase. If you want to know where we are in the state of Washington, while it is a nationally known for its uh, medical salaries, it is not in Klickitat County. And we have some of the best staff that I've ever met. The, the teamwork and the passion that goes along in doing that job is the true benefit to the citizens of Klickitat. And we want to maintain that. We've worked on bringing the stations into better state of repair. You know, we want professional people to take care of our families and we borrow them for a shift and we want them to have a standard that we too would be willing to live at for 48 hours. Sure. And that's not easy to do, really. Uh, it's not easy to have a motel every place you go. So, remember we're working out of pre-existing garages with 
uh, livable space, and we're trying to improve that. The, the furniture that has been bought in the last six months is the first furniture that was not taken out of a garbage dumpster. Okay? That, I'm not exaggerating. The, we put these things together as best we can. So the standards have improved. Okay. The, the employees are happier. And we all know how the productivity goes with happier employees. Um, with the exception of questions, I'll close with the numbers of calls have increased, as along with the complexity. You know, the Eagle Creek Fire was quite an advertisement for Klickitat County, in the sense that when all that recreation <coughs> closed down in the gorge, they found us. And now, they're capitalizing on it. They're, they're enjoying Klickitat County, and, and we opened our arms to them. With that comes uh, the burden of rescue calls, where an ambulance will be taken out of service for three hours to make a rescue, but it produces no revenue. They didn't need an ambulance. So three hours offsetting that ability to respond to real emergencies, it, it's the complexity that we did not anticipate, and it, it, it continues to uh, tax our, for poor choice of words, tax our abilities. Uh, the numbers still remain that 20% of the time you may not get an ambulance. We are busy. That's and fun. the board is very open to ideas or suggestions. If there's anything that you have of me, I'd be happy to make myself more available. Um, barring any questions, it's in the report. Thank Scott. You. Please, uh, if there's ways that the city and the council can help, please keep, keep us informed so we can uh, stand up. I just have one question here. Yes, now, sure. Tony, uh, now you, you uh, come as far east as the Dallas. You cover the Dallas when you're asked to. Or do you, you come as far as to even go to the deal if you're, cover, if you're called to come here? For ambulance? Yeah, am ambulance. We have an ambulance stationed in Goldendale, Dallas Port, oh, and White yeah. Salmon. Okay, that's what I'm referring to. When your ambulance is in White Salmon, yes. do they come and cover the Dallas when they need an extra ambulance? They will come to Avery when we are short and we're okay. down to level one. Then we'll move it to the center of the county as best as possible. I see. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good question. Any other questions or comments? So do they have, at a lot of the fire departments, do they have ambulance service at some of the fire departments where they could do, because I know there's a lot of EMTs where they could actually um, respond if they had to, to do a transport to a hospital. Absolutely. And thank you for reminding me it's on the list. I didn't elaborate on it. Um, that is our mutual aid, yeah. and that is why we foster the, the relationships we do with uh, surplus property, is we need you. We need the fire departments in our pockets. Um, it, it's a possibility that we may enter into cooperative agreements. In the past, when we have seen other programs, that what I call almost but not quite, uh, so somebody ponies up a vehicle and somebody agrees to help staff the vehicle. We call it a cooperative engine. I think you remember the term by well. um, We haven't put anything to paper yet, but yes, we are very interested in partnering up with the fire districts. Um, my new job has allowed me to work closer. For example, uh, the west end of the county, the fire departments are training not quite, but almost on a regular basis with the ambulances. Hopefully this week there will be an article. Uh, we entertained a multi-agency return to school. Uh, the fire departments, the ambulance, the police, we went out to the bus garages and we reviewed school buses and performed an extrication of students off of the school bus. We are trying to make those relationships strong as possible so that there is no us and them. We want to work together, we want to talk the same language, um, and you're right. The EMTs, we, we all work on uh, 
uh, one job in two places. Excellent example. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Thank you, Tony. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good work. Let us help if we can. Okay. Next item on the agenda of the department reports. And we'll begin uh, with Reggie. I've just got a few things uh, for tonight. Uh, the first one is just some training that we're doing in the police department. We're doing our annual uh, workplace harassment training that we do every year. And uh, we'll be doing that this Wednesday. And uh, what we use is our insurance carriers' uh, videos and their program. And we will go ahead and we show it to all the officers during our in-service training. So that'll be this Wednesday. And we'll be able to uh, mark that off on our policy. Also, uh, we're going to be up at the fair. And I'd like to uh, thank uh, the sheriff, uh, Sheriff Songer. Uh, we're again partnering with a booth up there. So we'll have all of our community watch uh, stuff up there. We'll have uh, some giveaways that say Goldendale Police on them. And we're also going to be up there with um, the dispatch center that's going to have stuff up there also with us. So I'm hoping to be up there at least Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and uh, as much as I possibly can in the booth. But we'll have it manned the whole time. This Saturday, we're going to have our parade. We're gearing up for that. Um, we'll, again, um, be doing all of the uh, traffic safety and, and blocking the streets. But this year, we're also we're going to put, uh, for the first time, we're actually going to have a, uh, a trailer afloat in it that we've got <coughs> banners for and balloons. We're going to have McGruff uh, riding in the trailer, throwing out candy. And we're also going to be promoting um, our, our uh, Crime Watch program. We just ordered up, um, we ran out, this was the last one of our old Crime Watch. We ordered 250 of these uh, last year, and uh, we no longer have any left besides this one. So we went ahead and ordered um, some new ones. They're almost the same, but I got a little bit more creative this year and a little more uh, computer savvy and was able to put our patch um, on it. So every year I'm trying to improve a little bit at least. And uh, so we just got 200 of these in. So we're going to have these up at the fair, and we're also going to pass out some of these during the parade as we have the officers walking alongside and, uh, for, some, for some giveaways. Um, to go along with our Crime Watch program, we are going to be doing our downtown business walk where um, myself and a couple officers go from business to business and um, ask if they're having any issues or any problems and explaining the Crime Watch program to them. And we also give out magnets for refrigerators, and we're also going to be targeting a few neighborhoods in Golden Dell that uh, we've seen a little bit more crime than in other ones that uh, we're going to be targeting to uh, educate those neighborhoods to call. And I think the program, again, has been very successful in Golden Dell, and we want to keep that going. And the last thing, uh, Mayor, that I have for tonight is we are uh, programming our school zone weekends for the first day of school, which is September 3rd. Uh, so ho hopefully everything's going to be up and working, and it looks like the uh, crosswalks are being painted. And um, the school zone beacon should be working, so I think we'll be ready for the first day of, of school. So that's all I have. Thank you, Reggie. I'm really proud of the Crime Watch program that the police department has. has uh, I am too. I think it really works. Pioneered. It's really excellent. Yeah. Any questions or comments for the chief? Obviously, our fire chief is occupied right now with the fire, so we probably won't have a report from him tonight. Next item is resolutions, and Reggie Bartkowski, our police chief, will present the uh, information on the animal control vehicle surplus. So we have a 1995 uh, Ford pickup that we actually got from the Public Works Department uh, when they were getting ready to surplus it. We took it from them, I believe it was about 10 years ago, and we made that our animal control vehicle, and it has served us very well. Uh, for the last 10 years, and we were able to get a new uh, animal control vehicle out of our surplus police vehicles. Uh, so this one is ready to, um, to be surplus, and the Clickadette County Sheriff uh, contacted me and said they're trying to put in an animal control program over there, and they'd like to start with this uh, pickup that they would leave out at the kennel. And um, I thought that was a, a great idea. Um, they also get, uh, transferred five um, light bars to us for the pickup, so we actually did a, a, a swap for the for the vehicle. So um, I'm asking just for approval for this. I move to approve resolution number 701, transferring ownership 
of the 1995 Ford pickup to Clickadack County Sheriff's Office. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 701, transferring ownership of the 1995 Ford pickup to Clickadack County Sheriff's Office. Any discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Next item, Reggie will also present. This has to do with an update on state statutes and adoption by reference. And uh, Reggie will present that and it will call in the council to vote. Um, so, myself and the city prosecutor, Gwendolyn Brendai, we've been meeting a little bit on uh, some of our ordinances. And there's just a few that just needed a few things added uh, to help her. And uh, that's what Chapter uh, 9 um, does for us. And these are just adoptions of our state statutes by reference. And as we were looking through it, uh, there was a couple of the disorder. I'm uh, oh, sorry. The, um, I'd like to tell us the numbers. So, they can so sure the first one's going to be uh, 10.99.020. That's just the definitions. So we just wanted to get that definition um, brought in. And then 10.99.100. That's just sentencing factors. Um, that we want to get adopted. The third one is going to be 16.52.011 through 0 .350, and that is the uh, prevention of cruelty to animals. We want to adopt that. Then there's one that we'd like to have removed uh, because we already have it in the GMC as a city ordinance, and that's 9.84. Point zero three zero, and that's the state disorderly conduct. We have a GMC, a Ogunda Municipal one, that we wrote that actually has this in it already. So we don't need it. It's actually in there twice. So this is just a little bit of cleanup. And uh, so what we're asking is for this to be passed and to wait for the second reading of this. Thank you. Thanks, Reggie. Any questions or discussion? And this didn't go up before the ordinance committee. You just. Yeah, it wasn't really necessary. Yeah, these are just adoption of the state statutes that are already okay. But everybody else does. Okay, we just want to make sure they're in our ordinance. I move to adopt ordinance number one four nine six, which revises Goldendale Municipal Code Chapter nine point zero two, which is the state statutes approved by reference and waive the second reading. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance number one four nine six which revises Golden Ale Municipal Code Chapter 9.02, which is the state statutes adopted by reference and to waive the second reading. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you very much. The next item is the report of officers uh, and the city administrator, and we'll begin with Larry Bellamy, our city administrator. Okay, as many of you are, I'll deal with some of these things just in date order, but as some of you are, were around last Friday night, the 8th of August, we had a deluge of rain. About, from what I can tell, about two inches in less than an hour. So it was pretty much of a downpour. But we didn't get it out, we didn't get out of it unscathed. Uh, we did, had the public works crew out there trying to get the water to go down the storm drainage system, but it was just, it was massive and it, it uh, taxed, you remember using that word again, it taxed our system and so it, did, it didn't take it all. I think it was more of a 200 year event as opposed to a 100 year event. Uh, but we also had some uh, issues with our sanitary sewer system as well. There's still some infiltration inflow into our sanitary system and with one area of town, we, we kind of overwhelmed the capacity of the system in that one area. And it did uh, get into some people's homes. And so we are, if you haven't heard yet, but it's near the 500, what, 500, the west 500 block of Main Street. That's about where it happened. We're processing the claims right now. We're working with WCA trying to get everything resolved. Uh, we did get, uh, CERB Pro was able to get there and clean up, do the initial cleanup. We're talking about uh, the build back, bringing it back to the way it was, and then any personal items were 
receiving the claims from those as well. So we are doing our best to try to make take care of that, but we're working through all the insurance angles and stuff like that. So uh, in the this will lead us into and and it will also be something that reminds us we still have infiltration and flow into our sanitary system from our storm system, which can come because of high water table or cross connections or things like that, roof drains and so forth from down to our sanitary system. So one of the things we're going to start working on next year is going to be what we call smoke testing, which will uh, take certain areas of town and we'll plug them off so we can throw some smoke bombs in there and see where they come up and seep out and that will identify hopefully some places that we can go in and get fixed so we don't have that, that issue anymore. Clean, clean water going into the sanitary sewer system. So that's just an update on that. We're, the staff is helping out getting those uh, claims resolved and we hope to make those people whole. On the 20th, 26th of August, we're going to be opening steel bids for the fire department equipment. Um, there's still a fire engine back here and the old brush truck. We'll have those bid, seal bid opening on August 26th. On August 27th, which is a Tuesday, which is about a little over two weeks from today, that's when the, that's the new date for paving of the South Columbus from Golden Ridge Mobile Home Park down to the South City Limits. So this is the one where they're going to request, where they're going to start working at 6 o'clock in the morning, work all day and try to get it done in one day. You may see some of them moving in on Monday and moving out on Wednesday, but the bulk of the work is going to be done on Tuesday. And then we, we touched on the ordinance committee work a little bit. You had mentioned it didn't need to come to the ordinance committee, but we do have some other uh, I, things that we would like to bring to the ordinance committee and we'd like to prepare, start preparing some of those ideas uh, now. So we'd like to have an ordinance committee and on the second Monday of September, which will be the 9th of September, starting at 7 o'clock, we go from 7 to 9. And we've got several things that we need to discuss and talk about um, that we think will be important to, to consider. And then we still have the date of 9-23. I believe that is a Tuesday as well. On Tuesday? No, it's a Monday. Monday. Oh, it's a Monday. You're right. Okay, so that's a Monday. That's the fourth Monday of September. Yes. And the broadband presentation will be made at that particular meeting. So if you're on the broadband committee, make sure that you schedule that time because that will be the, the draft final plan before it is submitted to the Department of Commerce. And what time do you say? That would be from 7 to 9. Thank you. Uh, I kind of skipped the date, but on 9-3, which is the uh, day after Labor Day, will be our new building inspector's first day. He, his name is Jeff Rayleigh. He actually lives in White Salmon right now. Uh, but he had 15 years experience with the Thurston County Building Department and then has since had his own construction business and worked in the construction field for the past 10 years. And we had, we made him an offer of employment. He said he's going to accept it. We're just waiting for it to be mailed back to us. Um, and we should have that in hand tomorrow or the next day. Is there so, going to be, so what's that? Is there going to be some crossover training between him and There will be. We will continue to see Ken here from time to time. In fact, he came in for a couple of things today. He'll be in tomorrow morning. Then he's got some things planned. And he'll be back on September 3rd through the 5th to help do some crossover training. Fantastic. The mayor and I did meet with SOGO. And um, we had a really good meeting. He's not ready to make any presentations just yet, but we had a good exchange of ideas. And he's going to be working on putting together a team to 
deal with that particular piece of property. So we'll have something in the near future for a presentation. I think that's all I have. Were you going to discuss the airport at all? I wasn't, but I can. Uh, we had a really good meeting, I thought, for over two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I thought uh, Roger did a great job of uh, putting it in the paper. I certainly can recap if you'd like. Yeah, would you please? Okay. We had a good, solid group of individuals of interest of airport uh, committee members, as well as some people from the community that were interested in what we were trying to do. Uh, as most everybody is aware, we do have a $550,000 grant from the Department of Commerce through their capital grant program. Uh, pretty much, I think there was consensus amongst the whole group that we wanted to, as a first priority, is to put in a fuel system at the airport. I, how that's configured, we're not sure yet, but I think at the very least we're going to have at least one kind of fuel, which would be the Avgas, which is used by 90% of the airplanes that utilize that particular space, utilize our airport. And then we talked about Jet A fuel, about maybe bringing in trucks for Jet A because it's used for less frequently. Um, but then there was also discussion about we want to make sure that that people are certified to handle this stuff, and make sure we have the right people to handle that. And so that was a thing that we discussed as well. So we're trying to maximize the, the use of the money, but we're also trying to keep everybody safe and make sure that the gas is properly inspected at the right intervals, things like that. It would be a card lock system uh, on the, the initial tank, not the trucks. So I'm kind of, so don't, the card lock system would not apply to the trucks, it would apply to the above ground tank that we would apply, that we would build at that particular site. Uh, I think we discussed the site, it's pretty much, uh, well you have to be familiar with the airport, but there's kind of, the two taxiways kind of converge and out to the west of that taxiway would be, generally would be the location of the, uh, of the storage tank. And then if there's any money left over, We'll try to do some more improvements uh, with the shoulders and, and any lengthening or widening of the runway, we can talk about doing those things. Um, but we were tasked, tasked with the, the committee said, let's refine our numbers, let's make sure that we look at some numbers, because one of the committee members um, had brought forth some uh, research that he had done with regard to what the cost would be our consultant had some research that he had done on costing, and the two were a little ways apart, so we want to make sure <laughs> that the cost estimates are realistic, um, but also build in some contingencies as, as well because of the construction climate that we have. So we are to meet again, and we will put some of these numbers together and have our new presentation on the numbers and go from there. Uh, we hope to, once we decide on a project and specifically where it's going to be, then we will start the, the environmental process and the archaeology and historic preservation process, as well as the planning process through Clickman County uh, as well. So there's quite a bit of planning that has to go on. We do have to spend the money by June of 2020. Uh, 2021, excuse me, uh, but we want to not push that date too far. <laughs> One more repeat again. We had to decide. Okay. So it's still, still okay. up in the air, yes. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Larry? That'll be it. Any other questions or comments? If not, we'll go to our uh, City Council members, I'm going to start with Milan Wallen. Yeah, well, thank you, Mayor. Well, again, uh, when we talked about the airport, uh, I have been uh, working with the uh, DNR office in Olympia, but also through DOA, and uh, to see if there's even uh, fuel trucks out there, surplus fuel trucks out there. Again, all we're doing is just see if there's any available. That's all we're doing right now. Hoping another week or two that 
we can kind of do some research on that and maybe later on to get a report back. But then that's, again, that's all what we're doing now, just see it's available. Well, one other thing is when you mentioned the city, you know, the city of uh, uh, Fire Hall was also flooded. That was the water coming in. Oh, that, and we're going to kind of put that in a different bucket. Oh, oh okay. It's all right. Okay. I can, I can explain so that we, so that you know. But there were four individuals that were located in a particular section of our community. They're all right next to each other. And that's where the cross connection of the sanitary and the storm system occurred. Mm -hmm. With the fire hall, all they got was a bunch of sheet flow storm water right. that seeped in through their doors and, and got into their offices and their training room and right. soaked the carpet and stuff like that. So that's a little different pot of money that will be, we'll still work with our insurance provider because it's a property damage by rainwater. Yeah. Okay. Good. Anyway, that's all I have here. Okay, thank you. Andy? Good. Shannon? Okay. You guys. Mm -hmm. right. um, last Friday, I attended, I guess it was a third cruise in that was held by, there's three businesses in town CNC Auto, uh, Prez Collision, and uh, Gear, Gold Dell Exhaust and Repair, Auto Repair. Uh, we put on these little cruise ins, and it was down at the park. We saw the police presence there, which was very nice. Uh, nobody was showing off. We just all parked to have a good time. And I actually made it back in time so I could attend. But uh, the next one is in two weeks, and I don't know where it's at. Okay. It's, well, it's two weeks from last Friday. They've been doing it every two weeks, so and that was really nice. It's sort of getting all the gearheads together and whatnot. So look at Facebook. There's a, a page by Motorsports of the Gorge, and they announce all the, the contacts on there. So if you're on Facebook, I'm not. But I do stalk it through my wife's hands. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's that's all I have, though. Thanks, oh, sir. one more thing. Where's the potholes going to be repaired? Uh, Doug and I talked about that today. We've got a couple of things uh, going on right now. We have some a uh, couple of cleanup items, and then the focus on the crosswalks. We'll make sure we get that done. We did talk about ordering uh, some asphalt for months and paving. I'm hoping that we'll get something done yet this month. I hope so too. I, I just had to replace two rear tires oh. on my Jeep at over $300 a piece. So, Ooh, and uh, one of the sidewall nice. damage, and they said it could have come from a pothole. Cool. So, Jeeps are, but my Jeep's got really expensive tires on it. So, I guess the we don't mind people calling in and giving us places where there are some potholes. Did you write it down? No, I'm serious. Buyers. I already know. Okay. <laughs> the full length. Sure Am I told you not to count the number of them? Could be like that once, you know, remember the Portland or whatever, they actually have a pothole app. There you go. <laughs> so, so people literally punch in what street they're on. In a GPS location. And it actually comes up on their city, on a city map. And it actually... We are that sophisticated. Why would you want to advertise that? <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. I noticed that the uh, ATV riders are the first to notice the potholes. <laughs> Jane? Uh, yeah, I have a couple things. Um, just off some notes I've made. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one in the in the room who was a little disappointed uh, with the failure of the KBH bond at the beginning of the month. month. Um, I know, having talked to several community members, uh, I don't think I've talked to one single person who was like, yeah, you know, good thing it didn't pass. I mean, I think people are really um, pretty disappointed about that. And I know it was pretty disheartening to see, um, you know, all the negative uh, rhetoric flying around on social media around around that bond. It was um, just a bummer the, the things that people were getting hung up on. Um, I know, uh, you know, as someone who's new to the community and plans on growing a family here, um, healthcare is something we should be investing in in our community. Like, uh, there's there's taxation, you know, that people get hung up on, but I mean, healthcare that's something that it really makes sense to invest in and. Um, you know, the keyboard warriors that I noticed who did nothing but whine and complain about the state of our health care currently were unwilling to invest in it. And that's, that's not the attitude that we need to have as a community. Um, so I hope, I know that the, the, the hospital is planning on running that bond again, which is good. Um, and I hope there's an opportunity for people who are passionate about seeing it passed uh, to be able to go out and knock on doors and try to, 
contain the spread of false you know, misinformation that was going on um, on this first run of the bond because that's something that's just really going to be crucial to, to the growth of our community. Um, on a sort of additional note, uh, speaking of healthcare in our community, um, a few days after the bond, I was able to take my dog out to um, Marianne Randall's new clinic, uh, which is a beautiful facility. And, and it was, it kind of hit me in the gut because it was like, we have two veterinarians practicing in our small town, both of whom have now these, um, you know, equine facilities and small and large animal practices and, you know, house calls and everything. And it's like, we're obviously willing as a community to invest in the healthcare of our pets and livestock. When do we do the same for human beings? I mean, that, that kind of just like really hit me um, in, in the heart, but I mean, I'm, I'm really excited for, for Marianne and, um, and that new facility. I uh, also was excited to be able to attend the second anniversary celebration of Dwinell Country Ales, which happened over the weekend. Um, Justin's not here, so I'll brag on it a little bit, uh, so he doesn't have to brag on it himself. But um, it was uh, Friday and Saturday night. Friday night there was music, Saturday night there was wood-fired pizza, and it was just really, um, really cool to see the cross-section of the community that came out for that. Uh, there were, you know, families with kids in tow, and there were younger couples, older couples, people from out of town, people from in town. It was, um, it was just a really, uh, really great event, and we're, I mean, I feel like we as a community are lucky that, that uh, the Lees chose Goldendale to establish that business because um, it really draws people into our town, and I think it draws our community out to have kind of that, that gathering place, and the fact that they have made such a point of, of creating this, um, you know, this community gathering space, and they continue to host these events, I think is a, a great asset to our community, and I wish them all kinds of success in years to come. And That's they, all. They've uh, gotten quite a high, you know, third in the, is it the nation on breweries, I believe. I, I've read it well, they, they do, yeah, they, 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 they've, uh, you know, been collecting some pretty good accolades and, um, and they're, they make a great product and they have a great space, so, you know, I'm a little bit biased, I live around the corner, I go there to grade my papers during the school year, um, and, uh, and, and it's great to have a space for that, so, you know, uh, cheers, cheers to Dwinell. Thank you. Any other? That's it. Thanks a lot. On the marriage report, I would like particularly to draw attention to the incredibly hard and timely work of our public works crew. When that torrential rain came, they were out all night long finding the moat, the uh, pothole, not pothole, but finding the uh, manhole covers, there's a new name for them now, uh, that were blown off and getting that all so people didn't have a really bad pothole to deal with. Um, but they, they were exceptional in responding, taking responsibility, and everybody showing up to get the job done. I mean, that's the kind of collaboration and cooperation that really makes the city work. Uh, at the same time, I want to thank our police department and our fire department, because all three of these departments work very much as a crew. They do excellent work. They do everything they can to serve the city, and we need to, to be able to uh, take pride and, and appreciation in that. Absolutely. Thanks. Reggie, we'll talk to Noah later. Um, The other thing is tomorrow night, and I don't know that anybody will be attending it. I know Milan will, and I will. Uh, but the uh, Cleotet County Public Economic Development Authority, that's usually called the EDA, KCPEDA, they will meet tomorrow night at the uh, Board of Commissioners uh, Chambers uh, at 6 p.m. <coughs> and so uh, it's a public meeting that we're discussing a number of things, including uh, requests for funding and things of that nature. So. Just wanted to make sure you knew about that. And that's all I have. The next item is public comment. We'd like to hear from whoever's here for public comment. Uh, my name is Asa Israel, and I live um, at 520 West Allen Street in Goldendale. Um, I'm here um, on behalf of the Goldendale Farmers Market, and I'm also on behalf of anybody who enjoys the Econi Park. Um, unfortunately, the Public Works representative is not here today but I'll speak to the rest of you and hope that when I leave this room tonight, I'll have some more advocates. Um, and what I'm advocating for is the preservation of two structures in Econi Park that are at this point scheduled for demolition. Um, the reasoning behind the demolition of them is extremely questionable, um, to say the very least. Um, I come from a construction background, and um, the Farmers Market Board has had the 
building that will actually influence and affect them the most, which is the second and only remaining of um, the Fort Simcoe replica buildings. You're probably familiar with them. Um, and if you didn't know, that's what they are. <laughs> I just learned this recently. There, um, there used to be two, um, as most of you know, and uh, one of them was demolished a number of years ago. But they represent the Fort Simcoe fort that apparently was at one point somewhere on that, on that site. That structure has been inspected by the farmer's market, and the people who inspected it have scratched their heads and questioned why on earth the city wants to demolish it. Um, the reason that was given to us was that there were structural issues. We looked at them. That's not true. I'm sorry to say that, but it's not true. expert? No, um, as as two, two experts, two construction people who have combined 40-plus um, years of construction experience have looked at these buildings. Now, the other one that was torn down, Carl said he stood on the second floor and he could rock the building. So, yeah, definitely a problem there. But I want to let everyone in this room know that um, without that building, the farmer's market would probably fail. And as Jane was talking about assets to the community, Buenells, the hospital, our veterinary clinic, I want to make it clear that this is an incredible asset. The farmer's market is an incredible asset. And it, and it, and it will hopefully grow. The people who are part of the farmer's market are committed. You have to be if you want to sit down there for five hours every Saturday and wait for people to show up. They're committed. They're dedicated. Um, and I kind of want to come here today as their voice and advocate. We're willing to put money into the building. We're willing to rebuild the awning that was removed. We're, we're willing to do what it takes to save that building. I've spoken to the board, so I can say they're, they're, they're willing. And we do have some money. That, that building represents the heart of our farmer's market. Without it, we would probably fail. Without it, the farmer's market will probably cease to exist as it does, um, which would be a loss to the community. It's a great asset. Um, because it's, it's a, that kitchen was built by the farmer's market. It's where we store our signage so that we can put signs out and advertise and all these other things. So thank you for your time. I know I'm out of time. Um, the other thing is the gazebo. Don't let them tear it down. Uh, it has fire, very minor structural integrity issues and um, could be repaired very easily with some flashing. It's a very interesting decision to make considering that the uh, entire floor was replaced at great expense very recently. Um, so thank you for your time. And again, I hope that I have changed some minds or at least educated some people about the issue. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here for a Ken McEwen, 519 East Broadway Street. Uh, now that the EMS fellow is here, I, I didn't get your name, sir. Tony. 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 Uh, years ago, when they uh, put a, the levy up, uh, so many so many cents per thousand that we pay, right? <clears throat> well, for some reason, they exempted the east end of the county from having to pay in to the EMS, and that's millions of dollars worth of windmills that could have been taxed. Well, and had some of that money go into the EMS uh, district. I thought that was not a good idea. Uh, their claim was, well, we don't really use the, the ambulance out here. We get it from Yakima or, or, or it's one of those towns of Modton or something. Well, that's a lame excuse. They're in the county. The windmills are, are in our county. We should be getting the money off of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one point I wanted to bring up tonight. Another one is, I, from what I understand, the Click that county commissioners are actually considering with when they build this uh, annex on the parking lot at the Hall Hotel. <laughs> well, their plans are to tear out all the trees on the on the uh, on the courthouse lawn, except for the Christmas tree. Now I don't know if it's really true or not, but it came from a fellow who who attends the meetings and is actually running for county commissioner. So. I don't know many people that would be all that thrilled to find out that all the trees are going to be ripped out of the, the, uh, the courthouse lawn. Sure. And so maybe you guys might not want to consider getting in touch with them and maybe drafting a letter and maybe showing some opposition to it or some kind of uh, compromise of some sort. They changed their plans. To what? To carrying out one tree, the crab apple at the very... Oh, just one tree? Well, that's good. Yep. All just right. wanted to let you know. I spoke to them a few days ago. Well, that's great. Unless they lied to me. 
Where is Oh, well, good, because they're beautiful trees. Yeah. And they really add a lot of character to the town. The shade helps a lot. Yeah. And then one other thing, uh, been noticed in the bubble on the, on the sewer pond over there, it seems to be getting larger. Is there a chance? Okay, so that means there, that, that liner is le has been leaking probably for 20, 25, 30 years, and there's a methane bubble that's pushed the liner up, right? Right. Isn't that what's going on down there? Yes. Okay, is there a, good, is there a possibility that that's entering the water table and people's wells? Or has it hit that layer of, of clay and it's not going any further? And the, the, get, the methane gas is pushing the, the, the liner up, right? But that collection pool is no longer used because of that issue to make sure that it... Yeah, but the thing. methane gas is still there, the bubble is still there. Yeah, but the water in it is not being used. That's, that's, I mean, it's not a part of the water system. Oh, it's not being added to? They, could, they found that they could do it with a much smaller pond. This, and this one is in a long term. Uh, removal process. Oh, it is? You have oh, to get okay. the liner out of there. It costs oh, yeah. a whole bunch of money. Yeah. Oh, I was wondering about that. Does the Department of Ecology have any opinion on that? Oh, yes. Yes, very much so. Yeah. All right, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Anyone else for public comment? If not, we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We moved and second to adjourn the City Council meeting for August 19th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.